So let's look at the molecular geometry for HCO3 with respect to that central carbon there. We can see that the carbon is bonded to three different things, three oxygens, and that according to valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, those three things are going to spread out as far away from each other as they can while still remaining bonding. And that's going to give us a trigonal planar geometry. They'll be in a plane and they'll be spread out as far away from each other as possible. But let's use the AXN notation to make sure we have the correct molecular geometry or shape for HCO3 minus. A, that's the carbon we're talking about. X, that's the number of atoms bonded to the carbon. Those three oxygens are bonded to the carbon. So we'll put a three here. The hydrogen's not bonded to the carbon, so we're not going to worry about that. And then N, that's the number of non-bonding electron pairs, sometimes called lone pairs. All of the electron pairs with carbon are involved in chemical bonds, so we have nothing for N. We're just going to ignore it. So you could have memorized that AX3 is a trigonal planar molecular geometry. Or, if you had a table available, you could look it up. As we go down our table, we see AX2, and right there is AX3, a trigonal planar molecular geometry, and the bond angle should be about 120 degrees. Let's look at that HCO3- molecule in three dimensions. Here the carbon's black, the oxygens are red, and the hydrogen is white. You can see that it's spread out, like we said, and also that it's all in one plane. Might be a little bit difficult to see there in the image, but that's all pretty much in one plane. And the bond angles, this angle here, here, and here, are going to be 120 degrees. So that's the molecular geometry, or shape, for HCO3-. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.